And speaking to her, she was having a hard time imagining this life for her because deep down inside, she was like, well, this could never really even happen. So like, why waste the time even thinking about what, how I would love to be a photographer full time. And so I explained to her that the universe only knows, it only speaks in frequency. It doesn't know right from wrong. It doesn't know what's true and what's not. It just mirrors and or reflects how you feel internally. Welcome to Mindset Mastery with Julissa Edwards, the podcast dedicated to helping high performers unlock their true potential and cultivate a powerful mindset for success. I'm your host, Julissa Edwards, a mindset coach and advocate for healthy high performance. Join me on this transformative journey as we delve into strategies, insights, and inspiring conversations with experts and thriving high performers. Get ready to master your mindset, elevate your performance, and create a life of purpose and fulfillment. Let's dive in. Hello, hello. So I am really fired up to talk to you guys today about two case studies that I don't normally do episodes like this, but I had such huge revelations and these two separate client calls that I really want to share with you and no information about personal life is going to be stated so their privacy is kept under wraps. Um, But I think it would be so essential to learn from these two different individuals and how we overcame their perceived problems. So that's what we're going to get into today. And I'm just going to apologize in advance if you don't already know and haven't been following me on my Instagram stories. Um, Me and my family are currently in the middle of a move. Therefore, my office has no furniture except for my laptop, podcast, mic, and chair. And so you may hear an echo. And so I do apologize, but the content here and the quality of the information here is just so important that I had to record right away. So let's get into it. I have been talking a lot to leaders, entrepreneurs about how your perceived problems isn't what you think it is. So I have two different case studies here. The first client has been having a hard time recognizing what her dharma, her purpose and life is. And more importantly than that, she had a hard time believing that if she actually followed her dreams, it could lead her to happiness. Now take a moment and pause and see if you can relate to that, just that fact right there, or that relatability that you are maybe happy with what you're doing. Things could be better, but your dream, dream, dream life you've put to the side because deep, deep down inside, you just don't think it's feasible for some way, for whatever reason that may be, right? And so I have the second case study that I'm going to share with you is someone who experiences burnout, hello, super relatable, in her places of work and in her freelancing that she does on the side because she she doesn't know how to have work-life balance. And so I'm going to give you the perceived problem is that She doesn't have work-life balance. But after our conversation here, you're going to see that it's actually something completely different and how we helped her heal in order to better her work-life balance. So what I love about my work is that I am a therapist first, did that for eight years before going into the coaching field and the mindset uh, and mindset coaching. But I'm also a coach. So the grand difference here is that a therapist usually helps you process emotions, is there for you for support, and um, focuses a lot on past and present, right? How your past is affecting your present. All very important things. A coach is more likely to get you to an end result. So they're here to take you from point A to point B. So their focus on their conversation and skill sets of what they're sharing with you is usually focused on present and future because they're trying to get you to a desired goal. What I do as combining both industries, and I also sprinkle some spirituality in there. If you know my work, I know who I am. I'm very spiritual. Um, I love metaphysics, law of attraction, energetics, all of that jazz mixed in with going into your past, how it affects your present, and using that information to catapult us forward into being able to reach our goals at an even faster rate because we're combining all things together here. So I'm going to go back to the first case. So this woman that I was helping, she was having 
a hard time believing that she could really make it as a photographer. Um, and being so, because a lot of people in her inner world, she was seeing a lot of starving artists, a lot of uh, photographers who loved what they did, but if they were doing it full, full time, they were struggling to pay their bills. And, um, or the opposite where, you know, it was just like a side hustle for some people where it brought in cash here and there, but not enough to fulfill their um, financial responsibility. So they usually have a nine to five on top of that. And listen, I respect all of it. If you're the struggling artist because you love this thing, I respect it. And if you're the um, artist who does it on the side because you want to have a more stability in your finances, I respect it. Right. So. We got to talking and we learned a little bit about her childhood history and all the things. And we got to speaking about why this would even be her dream life. Like why photography? Like, is it actually photography? Do you even think that that would really make you happy if that's the only thing you did full time? And what we discovered is that she had a really hard time even fantasizing about this topic because there was this underlying belief that it could never happen. And so let me teach you a little bit about energetics. The universe responds to our frequency and our frequency can be derived a lot from our emotions, how we feel. Um, you can Google like, you know, frequencies in emotions and you probably get a graph that will show you, you know, like uh, emotions like happiness, gratitude, joyfulness are a high they are at high frequencies, meaning that the atoms are vibrating at a higher pace versus emotions like guilt, shame, um, despair, hopelessness are more on the bottom of that chart and they vibrate at a much slower pace. So it's no surprise that when an individual struggles with depression or symptoms of depression, which usually sound like guilt, shame, um, that they have low energy because their atoms are simply not producing enough vibration to get them to a place where they have energy to do things, right? Versus someone who is elated, happy, has gratitude. Um, you know, they have a lot of good feel energy. And with that energy, they're able to take aligned action towards their goals or towards things that will just continue to make them happy. Now, that doesn't mean that we should never, never feel anger or um, sadness or hopelessness. We're human beings. We have to feel all the things. But I'm just giving you the science behind um, energy and vibrations and frequency. So in speaking to her, she was having a hard time imagining this life for her because deep down inside, she was like, well, this could never really even happen. So like, why waste the time even thinking about what, how I would love to be a photographer full time? And so I explained to her that the universe only knows it only speaks in frequency. It doesn't know right from wrong. It doesn't know what's true and what's not. It just mirrors and or reflects how you feel internally through your vibrations, through your frequency. So when she's trying to tell me her dream life and even before finishing it, she already knocks it down by saying this could never happen. What the universe is hearing is that there's not enough potency. There's not enough energy here to see this through. So I'm not going to fund this. I'm not going to open up lanes, pathways for this to become a real thing because deep down, because of her feelings that this won't ever happen, the universe is just responding to that. It's like, you know, that's never going to happen. So I'm not going to waste any energy here. The same thing happens in the opposite direction. If she really believes that she can only be a freelancer on the side and that she must maintain her nine to five in order to live her dream life. Again, the universe doesn't know right from wrong or good from bad. It's just like, cool, this is what you believe in. I'm going to keep giving you opportunities where you have enough uh, weddings and other opportunities to do your freelancing on the side on the weekends, but it will never be a full-time thing for you because it's just mirroring what you believe. I hope you are tracking and following here, okay? And so our little intervention slash session was really about how can we fix this? Well, first, let me educate you like I'm doing to you guys on this 
episode right here. Let me educate you on what's happening. And then are we willing to fix this, to work on this? And she was fully game and all of the things. And so we get to talking and we recognize she's then finally able to fully dive in and tell me why photography would be the ultimate dream life for her. And it was so beautiful for her. Photography is something that gives her purpose, that gives her uh, creative expression artistically, and that she's able to have um, a sense of ownership over like, this is mine. I took this picture. I created this thing. And it's my work of art that I'm proud of and that I can receive recognition for. So then I said, hmm, that's interesting. So are there other areas in your life where you don't receive recognition? And so that went down a little wormhole of learning about her history and her current workplace and all the things. And we learned that indeed she does not feel that she gets proper recognition for the hard work that she's done doing in other areas of her life. So amongst many, this is a shortened, you know, summary of what happened here, but amongst many other conversations, we learned that photography would not, would not only be her dream life, but it would allow her to heal through her artistic expression and through her ownership of her artwork. And so when you look at it that way, it shifts from here's a dream that I would hope to have one day where you have moments of momentum where you think you could really do it. And then you have moments where it's like, eh, I'm not cut out for this. I'll always have to have a nine to five and uh, do freelancing photography on the side versus no, this, this now heavily, this is now heavily important not only because I'm super skilled in this area, I take fantastic photos, I'm able to capture people's emotions and, and milestones in picture form, and that's wonderful. But also, doing this allows me to heal. And so that piece alone is going to allow this woman to have a little bit more longevity in her efforts of making this a full-time thing as a human being and as an energetic, soulful being, because there's now so much more intentionality and so much more importance on doing this action that besides the money would just simply make her happy and allow her to heal past woundings from her childhood. It's now like a must. And so the universe feels that and it's like, Cool. I want to give you more opportunities like this. And so this is the beginning of us changing her reality and her attracting different things in her timeline. So I'll share that with other clients that have had similar problems, I guess you could say, not this exact, you know, thing of like wanting to be a photographer, but lo and behold, within due time, because of their belief upgrades, you could call them, and their subconscious resetting, they do end up living a life of bliss, whatever that means to you, right? And so let's go to the second client. <laughs> so the other conversation that I had this week was with a really skilled, uh, art, another artistic individual. Well, she has a corporate job and she also does freelancing on the side, similar to my other client. But um she is really skilled at what she does. Um, she builds websites and she's a marketer. And um, she's kind of one of those beings who whatever she puts her mind to, she can conquer. Um, in her, but her field is anything artsy, anything of creative expression, things of that sort that kind of lights her up. And so she was telling me how she has a hard time balancing, having a work-life balance. And that she tends to self-sabotage because when she finds a new skill or a new job and they really applaud her for her efforts, she gets kind of like a high from that and ends up beating herself to the ground and work overworking long hours. And sometimes it's acts from her boss, but sometimes it's self-inflicted pain where she's just going hard, working late hours, waking up early, like fully indulged, um, in this uh, career or job that she has and to the point of burnout. So now she's in a place of her life where she's not working as much and um, she's having a hard time diving in again for her fear of getting sucked in again and not being happy. 
right? And so traditionally you would say, okay, let me teach this woman how to have more work-life balance, but that's not the problem here. The problem here is in her repetitive actions, her personality, like the, the bigger, it's not even a problem. The more curiosity factor here is, well, why do you tend to go so hard? in the paint? <laughs> Why do you work yourself to burn out? Like what's causing this? What emotion is causing this? Because remember, emotions have energy and energy allows us to do certain things for, for better or worse. And so we go digging deep into her past and how long has this been happening and all of that jazz. And um, mind you, these, even though we're digging deep, like these conversations are like 30 minutes long and then it goes back to coaching so I can help them achieve what they want to achieve in their life and their business. Um, so, you know, we're digging deep in all the things and she expresses to me that she oftentimes feels like the outsider and a lot of her past is riddled with guilt and shame for many things that we won't state here. And in learning all of that beautiful, open-hearted, vulnerable conversation um, that we're having, we we understand that the inner child with inside of her feels very lost and um, has a high need for love and um, appreciation and acceptance. So one of her skill sets is what she does greatly at her place of work. And so when she receives good praise and applause for all the good work that she's doing, it is a high for her because it's something that her inner child desperately needed in her past um, would, have, would have been very helpful to help her endure her childhood traumas. And so in learning that, our, our, our solution or our um, healing remedy is not to help her have more of a life, a work-life balance. It's to heal the inner child and solely but surely helping her realize that she's worthy and that she is indeed loved. And... She doesn't have to rely on outward praise, outward praise for her to understand that she's a beautiful girl, woman, inside and out, and her actions don't have to depict her worthiness. Once she's able to heal that, then she'll most likely never go back into the habit of overdoing it because she won't be overdoing it for anybody because she knows her worth and she can probably live a better life where she has beautiful work-life balance because her work does not depict her worth. And that is a super common issue with entrepreneurs. Usually leaders, entrepreneurs are very good at what they do. Hence why they're leading their own business and you know they're figuring it out. Um, and because of that, sometimes entrepreneurs will work themselves to the bone because it means everything to them. The business's success means everything to them. And I get it. I was once there too. I am an overcoming, uh, healed workaholic. And um, my subconscious sometimes still wants to do those old things. I get it. I fully get it. I fully resonate. And so it was a beautiful conversation that we had. Because in real time, we were able to see what the perceived problem was. So for the first case, it was she thought that she didn't have any, um, she thought she had commitment issues of like one day she does this job, the next day she does the next. And she was like, I'm, I'm hopping around too much and I don't really know what I'm supposed to do with my life. Um, and the perceived, the real issue here was the lack of, confidence, a lack of certainty that her dream life was actually very much or could be a reality for her. It wasn't that she didn't 
have good ideas as to what she wanted to do with her time. It was that she never believed in them enough to stick with it long term. And for the second one, the perceived problem was that I lack work-life balance, but the actual problem was that she has a lot of healing to do within her past surrounding guilt and shame and uh, worthiness. So that's it. Super short episode. I just wanted to show you guys the beautiful work that we get to do when we heal. I'm a firm believer and and an embodiment that when you heal it inward, you have outward successes because everything in life is, is a mirrored reflection of what your inner world looks like. And so if your inner world looks like self-defeating thoughts, anxiety, burnout, um, disconnect from self, then you're going to have poor relationships with other people. Then you're going to have anxiety in the outside world. And you're going to have events that produce anxiety in your in your day-to-day life. And so um I'm as always humbled, so grateful to do the work that I do to be able to break down language that makes it easily understandable to others so they could implement it in, into their lives and um really continue my mission of just helping others heal so they can live a happy life. Uh, And they can be clear on what happiness actually looks like for them. So I hope this case study examples were, was helpful. And if you are looking for more support like this, we are currently enrolling for the uh, Entrepreneur's Mind Reset Program, which is a six month mastermind where I help business owners, leaders, entrepreneurs have a life of happiness so that everything they touch can truly turn to gold because inside of them, there is a beautiful gold radiating light of love, insight, awareness, and ever um, and ever healing. And anything that they touch will just receive that beautiful loving energy. And um, it makes life pretty magical. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Until next time, bye for now. Are you a high achieving leader, constantly striving for success, but feeling drained by the weight of responsibility? It's time to hit the reset button on your mind and unlock your full potential. Introducing the Entrepreneur's Mind Reset, a transformational journey designed for CEOs, type A leaders, and ambitious professionals ready to prioritize their mental and spiritual well being. Join our exclusive six month program where evidence based therapy meets somatic work and metaphysical techniques. Here, you'll find a tribe of like minded achievers driven by their passion for success and growth. With personalized one-to-one coaching, group sessions, and ongoing community support, you'll conquer burnout, master your energy, and cultivate a sense of inner peace and abundance. Say yes to yourself and embark on a journey of healing, growth, and success like never before. Visit our website or simply look at the show notes below and reserve your spot today. The Entrepreneur's Mind Reset, because true success starts from within. Thank you for tuning into Mindset Mastery with Julissa Edwards. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe to the podcast to receive future episodes packed with valuable insights. Remember to follow us on social media at thehealthy.highperformer for more inspiration, tips, and updates. If you found this episode helpful, we'd appreciate it if you could share it with your network and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your support means the world to us as we continue to empower high performers like you. Until next time, keep mastering your mindset and thriving as a healthy high performer.